property? Have you been hearing about what a great time it is to get into real estate, but you dread having to do it all by yourself? Or maybe you don't even know where to start. Do you want to literally sit back and receive rental checks each and every month while barely even lifting a finger? Then watch this short tutorial. I'm going to show you how you can quickly build a portfolio of rental properties that can fund your lifestyle and retirement. So regardless of what your dreams are, you know maybe it's to spend more time with your family or to travel with them. And maybe you want to fund your kid's education. Or maybe you want to donate to your favorite causes. Only rental properties can help make each and every one of those dreams a reality. Hello, my name is Mike Wolf, and for the past 20 plus years, I've been teaching investors from all over the world how to create a life of freedom through real estate investing. And I've been featured on major media such as ABC, NBC, CBS, The Globe and Mail, Yahoo Finance, just to name a few. So for the last five years, due to increasing demand from busy professionals just like yourself, who want everything done for them, I've been uh, creating a program of turnkey properties. Now a turnkey property is one where basically we've bought the home, we've fixed, we, first we've had it inspected, then we fixed everything that came up on the inspection report. After that we uh, you know, search for good tenants and put our property management team in place to look after it for you. And because I know how busy most of my professional clients are, we take care of everything from insurance and uh, paying the property taxes for you, the utilities, you name it. We do everything to make it as stress-free for you as possible and so we don't have to interrupt your busy work schedule and lifestyle. So uh, basically what we do is uh, look for the best neighborhoods. We seek out, uh, we're not just buying anywhere, we're, we're doing a lot of research we're looking at uh, different demographics and picking the right homes in the right neighborhoods. So to maximize that will maximize your cash flow. So one of the things that we do once we find these great properties, one of the most important things you can, you can ever do when it comes to real estate investing is to pick the right tenant. The wrong tenant will make or it will actually ruin your whole real estate investing career. And trust me, I've been through this over the years. So one of the things that we do is we do uh, firstly a criminal background check on the uh, prospective tenant. We also look for people that had really good credit uh, up till the recession because quite often, you know, we had people that were really good with their money. They were previous homeowners and then the recession kicked in and maybe they lost their job. And at that point, their credit went down the tubes. So but these make the perfect tenants because anybody who's ever previously owned a home will typically take much better care of the property than somebody who's been a renter all their life. Plus somebody who's, who's um, you know, had bad credit even during the boom times, they, they have a very high likelihood of not paying their rent on time. So after we look at their criminal background check we learn, and, and their financial uh, situation, we also do some extra checks. So before we allow them to move into the property, we do a random surprise visit at their prop, existing property. And so we just tell them that we need one piece of paper signed and basically we get it to peek at how they're living in their existing property. And if we go there and there's weeds up to our knees or maybe they said they had no pets and when they open the door there's a dozen dogs running around the house. We know these aren't going to be the, the right tenants for us. We know that whatever they're doing to this property is what they're going to do to your property. So we're very, very careful who we select as, as tenants because, as I mentioned, it's going to make or break you know, what your return on investment looks like. Also, every single tenant that moves into one of the prop any of our properties has to sign at least a three-year lease. And we also give them what's called a lease option. And this basically gives them the option to purchase a property typically for at least 50% more than what you pay for the property. So what this means for you is that we have also have a built-in exit strategy where you're making a phenomenal ROI. And so what I mean by this is let's say you bought a property for $100,000. Your tenant, what we call the tenant buyer, the person moving into your property, has the option to purchase it for $150,000. They're going to give a deposit which goes to you. This deposit is not refundable, so it's not like a damage deposit. They don't get it back if they move out. So now they've got some skin in the game and it's going to keep them in the property longer. It's also going to uh, most likely lead to them taking much better care of the property because they eventually want to own that property. Now, the fact of the matter is, uh, in three years, most of these people will not qualify for a mortgage. And we know that and they know that. But when the three years comes and goes, what we typically do is we'll, we'll allow them an extension, we'll give them another three years, 
but we're going to raise the rent considerably. We're also going to raise the, uh, the eventual purchase price to them. So what this means is now maybe you've had the property for six years with no vacancy, uh, hopefully no repairs, and at the end of the day, an amazing return on investment, whether they close on it in three, six, or even if they never close on it, uh, you're just going to keep getting both the cash flow and the appreciation as the market goes up in Atlanta. So we're going to talk some more about why we picked Atlanta now. Um, as many of you know, I've invested all over Canada and the U.S. in my 24-year 24 24 career. And Atlanta is one of my favorite markets of all. And there's several reasons uh, for this. So let's talk about some of the facts regarding Atlanta. Uh, first of all, Forbes magazine ranks Atlanta number one for the rental market of all U.S. cities. So one of the things that I love about Atlanta is that uh, it's basically very landlord friendly. So what this means is if we, if we do happen to have a bad uh, tenant that slips through the cracks and gets into one of our properties, we can get rid of them very quickly. So if you contrast that with a place uh, such as California, for example, in California, if somebody knows how to work the system, they can basically live in your house for almost a year, even if they're not paying rent, even if they're damaging it. And imagine what that could do to your bottom line if you look at you know, having a home with no revenue for a whole year. In Atlanta, it's not like that at all. Um, it's also ranked number one as the least expensive large city to do business in. So if it's, if it's a, a relatively inexpensive city to live in, then there's a pretty good likelihood that your tenants will be able to afford the rent. And that's very important because at the end of the day, you know, we can, we can uh, look at some cities uh, that maybe look like good rental markets in general, but if your tenant can't afford to pay your rent, at the end of the day, it doesn't lead to a good experience for you. Um, also, it ranks number four for the number of Fortune 500 companies that are headquartered in, in a city. So uh, it's the head office to Coca-Cola, Turner Broadcasting, which owns CNN, Delta Airlines, uh, you know, Home Depot, the list goes on and on and on. And so not only are there a lot of different uh, companies, but they're all in different industries. And so what this means is if you contrast that with Detroit, which is known for the auto industry, when the auto industry went down the, uh, the tubes, uh, basically, the, the unemployment rate skyrocketed. So if one of those companies that I just mentioned, let's say Coca-Cola were to close its doors tomorrow, which I, I strongly doubt would ever happen, but if it did, there's a whole bunch of other companies in different industries that can pick up and, and hire some of these people that get laid off. So it's very important to look at that. Um, also, Atlanta ranks number three for job growth. So what that means is that there's people moving from other cities to Atlanta to basically... Uh, seek employment. A lot of uh, cities where, where people are getting laid off, you look at places like Detroit, you look at Ohio, you look at some of those other uh, cities where the economy is stagnant or maybe it's uh, getting worse. There's a lot of people leaving those cities, the population is going down and they're heading to places like Atlanta in search of employment. So what that means is there's more people putting a demand on the rental market and that's great news for us as investors. So it's very important to keep in mind that you know, quite often people say uh, to me, you know, isn't it, wouldn't it be easier just to invest in your own backyard? Well, I think that's uh, actually not an accurate statement for a couple of reasons. One is when we invest close to home, you know, we tend to micromanage things. We tend to think, oh, well, you know, it's, it's uh, in my own city, so I can basically, you know, look after the property myself and collect my own rent. Well, I can tell you that I used to collect my own rent, and it used to cost me a ton of money. So I'll give you an example. I used to, um, uh, quite often when I'd collect the rent, tenants knew I was uh, a pretty laid-back guy. And so they'd say, you know, Mike, you know, we're, we're, uh, we get paid on Friday. Is it okay if we pay you on Friday? And I'd always be very lenient and say, sure, no problem. Well, you know, Friday's no problem. I'll hold off on cashing your check till then. But then the next month, they'd say, oh, we don't get paid for, you know, another two weeks. Can you hold off two weeks? And each month, they'd progressively see how far they could push me without paying rent. Now, you contrast that with having my property management team, and we get to play good cop, bad cop. So you got to remember, first of all, my tenants don't have a clue who I am. Uh, secondly, if they go to the, uh, the um, property manager and ask for an extension, the, the uh, property manager can say, you know what, if it was up to me, I would gladly, you know, let it slide. But you know what, the homeowner, he's kind of a grumpy guy. Uh, you know, he's forcing me to give you this paperwork. So, you know, if you know what, if you get it caught up in the next couple of days, we can just rip it up. But unfortunately, I've got to serve you with these papers. And so, you know, even though I pay my property managers to look after my properties, at the end of the year, 
I have so much more revenue from rent uh, just based on the fact that I'm not personally involved. The emotion's out of it and I'm treating it just like a business and so should you. So there's the other, the other reason why I don't want to invest in your own backyard is the opportunities are not usually as good as they are. I mean, if you search around, you can find much better opportunities. So I live in Calgary, Canada, and in Calgary, it's an oil city. So right now, when oil is booming, uh, you know, basically house prices are through the roof. And for the price of one home in Calgary, I could buy, you know, four or five or six properties in a place like Atlanta. And... Once again, I don't need to micromanage it. I don't need to look after it. It's totally stress-free. If it was uh, close to where I lived, I'd have a tendency to want to go check on the properties and get personally involved. And now I'm stressed out. I don't, I don't need to be stressed out and neither should you. So it's very important to keep that sort of stuff in mind that you know the, the best homes aren't typically going to be in your backyard. It's best to search for the best markets where you're going to get the best return on investment. Another uh, big mistake I see investors make is quite often they want to invest where they vacation. And I, see, I hear this every day, you know, the people that want to buy properties in uh, places like Phoenix and Vegas or Florida. Those markets were great at one point, but they've gone up quite a bit because a bunch of hedge funds have gone there and bought up all the inventory. So now you're paying a premium for these homes and the numbers just don't work anymore. So you basically want to make your money wherever you're going to make the most you know the best return on your investment you can vacation and spend that money anywhere you like you don't have to own a property where you like to visit it just doesn't work that way so it's all about the return on investment where can you make the most uh, bang for your buck so you can enjoy it the most and you know once again usually it's not going to be in your backyard and quite often it's not going to be the places where you like to go on vacation so we carefully pick what cities we invest in and right now in my opinion Atlanta is by far the best so I'm going to talk about some of the different uh, steps that I do. Keep in mind that you don't have to do any of this because I've taken care of this for you. But if you were to try and do this yourself, here's some of the things you would have to go through in order to get, you know, basically these properties. So first, you've got to pick the right market. And one of the uh, problems people have is they tend to treat each city like it's one market. So when we're talking about Atlanta, there's a whole bunch of neighbors I will not invest in, either because they don't have good demographics, uh, the, the schools aren't good, uh, or maybe it's they're just too expensive. Sometimes everything's great about a neighborhood and I'd love to be, uh, buy properties there, but it's just too expensive relative to how much rent you're going to get. Then what we're going to do, uh, the second thing you have to do is market to attract motivated sellers. You've got to be able to find inventory. Now for us in Atlanta, we're fortunate we've built relationships with banks and these banks uh, sell their homes to us even though they could be selling for more money in a lot of cases to some hedge funds we've already developed the relationships with them and they they know us and they like us and so they do business with us so if you were starting from scratch you'd have to build those relationships and it's very difficult to do uh, then you've got to determine the market value of each property to make sure that you're getting a good deal you can't just buy uh, you know, we're not here to, uh, to just buy any property. It's all about buying the right properties at the right price. Then number four is a very difficult one. You've got to be able to repair each property. And we're, we're doing, you know, dozens and dozens of deals, sometimes hundreds of deals. And so we've managed to build teams where we can uh, keep down our costs because we're doing a lot of volume. Also, we own the carpet. We own the paint. We're not going and buying a home and then going to the carpet store each time we buy a home. We own all this stuff. Keeps our costs down. If you tried to do this yourself, you would, your expenses would be a lot higher than mine. And number five is to rent out the property. Very difficult to do that remotely. Um, number six is we handle all the tenant issues so that you don't have to. We deal with all the tenants and toilets. And number seven is we have a built-in exit strategy for you where we're going to sell the property to a, a tenant buyer. So we're going to go into this in more detail now, each of these different steps. So... Um, first thing, as I mentioned, is you got to pick the right market and neighborhoods. We do a lot of analysis and basically try to figure out within these uh, the city of Atlanta wh which neighborhoods we want to buy in, and not just what neighborhoods. We can actually narrow it down to the, the exact street. Everybody on my team lives in in Atlanta, and basically they know the city inside out. So, you know, sometimes. Um, one of the uh, uh, things about the U.S., if you're not from uh, the United States like I am, is that you can have two schools that are a couple of blocks apart, and these schools will have very different uh, test results. So if you buy on one, one street, 
uh, you might uh, be able to sell your home for considerably more, much faster, and also rent it out a lot quicker than one that's a few blocks away that feeds into the school where the grades aren't as good. Everybody wants to get their kids in the best schools. That's just one example of some of the things that we look at before we pick a neighborhood. And like I said, we sometimes narrow it down to certain streets, and sometimes one side of the street's a lot better than the other side of the street. So, as I mentioned, We've worked very hard to build relationships over the last few years so that we can get uh, motivated sellers, which in the case of Atlanta happens to be banks. And they're selling us big packages of properties, you know, sometimes with 5, 6, 10, 20, 30 properties in it. So we're able to take, uh, take down these big packages of properties and fix them up to make them, uh, make them uh, not just rent ready, but something that somebody wants to actually buy so that after you've purchased it, you're able to resell it, hopefully to your tenant buyer at a considerable, you know, a considerable price above what you paid for it. So very important though, that if you, you know, once again, if you try to do this yourself, it would require a lot of marketing, a lot of work. And by the time you actually found a property, uh, you might miss the opportunity. So the next thing you have to do is determine the value of each property. And uh, this requires a lot of work. And a lot of people use, you know, different websites like Zillow and Trulia and to be honest, they're horrible. They're a horrible source of uh, determining the value of a property. We've got people on our team, that's their sole job, is to figure out what the value of the property is so we can uh, get a good deal on it and make sure that it's, uh, you know, everything is, works out and creates a win-win for both us, you, and your, your tenant buyer. So a lot of analysis goes into doing that. Um, also, we once again repair each of those properties and we make it uh, well beyond what we would normally uh, do you call, I guess, rent ready. Normally, if you're doing a rent ready uh, repair, you're basically going to you know, fix the home just to make it safe and livable. You're not going to go much beyond that. And because we want to get the people that move into your home, we want to get them to buy this property off of you, we go uh, above and beyond. So every single one of the bedrooms in all of our homes, for example, has a ceiling fan. Now, that may sound like a really small thing to you, but Atlanta is a city where they have real seasons. And there's certain times of the year where basically if um, they had a ceiling fan in the bedroom, they don't have to use their air conditioner. And if they can keep their utility bills down, not only do they want to stay in your home as opposed to going to the home, home down the street where their utility bills are going to be higher, it also means there's a much better chance they can afford to pay you if they're not spending all their money on, on utilities. So another thing you really have to realize is when you try to get repairs done and you don't live in the, ci in the city where you're doing, uh, getting the work done, if you don't have the right team, uh, it's not uncommon for uh, people to try and rip you off and give you bills that are much higher uh, than they would if you were actually there supervising it yourself. So we have numerous teams on the ground and all these teams are competing for our business. So each team knows that if they give us a quote that's uh, unreasonable or if it's much higher than the other ones, they're not going to get a lot of our work. So uh, if you were trying to get this done yourself, you would be taking a lot of trips to Atlanta from wherever you are uh, to supervise and uh, um, basically make sure and ha you'd have to micromanage your teams. And that doesn't sound like a very you know turnkey and stress-free investment to me. So the next step is to rent out the property. And as I mentioned, that is a big task in itself because there's a lot of different things you have to look at when you're before you're taking in a tenant, especially if you're going to sign a three-year lease with them. You're stuck with this person for the long term, and it's very important to make sure you get the right uh, people. So as I mentioned, we not only uh, do a rental agreement with them, we do an option to purchase. And, and as I mentioned, this uh, will attract a much better uh, type of tenant who wants to own the property. They're going to take better care of it. They're going to pay rent. Uh, on time because they lose the option to purchase if, they, if they're late uh, too many times and that's right in the contract with them. So the next thing that we do is we handle all your tenant issues for you. So if they phone and uh, there's something that's wrong with the house, we're going to take care of it. And for the first year, as a matter of fact, we put a, a guarantee on the property that we're going to fix everything that comes up. And the reason we do this is as somebody who's owned a lot of properties myself, you know, one of the, the things that has really kind of been frustrating over the years is you buy a property, you have it inspected, and, you know, everything comes up good or you fix everything that comes up in the inspection. And then two weeks later, after your tenant moves in, they say the dishwasher doesn't work. Well, it's very frustrating because... You know, as you know, an inspector is only going to go in, into the home for maybe three or four hours. 
and they will find a lot of the things that are wrong. But it's sometimes these little things that uh, take up a lot of your time, like trying to find a you know, new dishwasher. We own hundreds of dishwashers, so it's just easier for us just to put a new one in for you and cover it. All the major stuff we know is going to be good. We know the roof, uh, obviously the inspector is going to check the roof for it very carefully. They're going to check the foundation. All the big expensive things will have been fixed. So it's very rare that anything big is going to come up uh, anytime uh, shortly after uh, your purchase. Now the other thing you have to realize is most of our, actually all our homes in Atlanta are relatively new. We don't typically buy homes that are older than 1990 and so you're not going to have typically plumbing problems, electrical problems. So usually your tenant's just going to have these small little things. But if you're a busy person, the uh, last thing you want is a call, you know, one week you got to replace a dishwasher and the next week you're replacing a fridge. We're just going to take care of all that for you in the first year. And usually that's when your tenants are going to have the problems is right after they move in. So we give it a full year. That way they can go through all four seasons. That way they've tested the uh, air conditioner. They've tested the furnace. You know, so hopefully anything that would have gone wrong has gone wrong. And as I mentioned earlier, because these people want to own the house, quite often they're just going to deal with all the small things anyway. They treat it like it's their own home right from day one. So um, basically, uh, as I mentioned, we're going to deal with all the tenant issues so you don't have to. And uh, it's very rare we're going to have to give you a call unless something major comes up. So we're going to sell the property to these uh, tenant buyers. We have a contract uh, with them right from day one. It's an option. They're not obligated to buy it, but we do take a deposit from them. And that deposit is non-refundable as well as all their payments. None of that goes towards the purchase price, by the way. It's all just strictly rent. But you've now got a built-in exit strategy where there's a significant, uh, you know, significant uptick for you. So if they, like I mentioned, if they close on it in three years, you've made 50%, maybe more, just on, on the difference uh, from what you paid to what you're selling it to them for. Plus, hopefully you've had 36 on-time payments. And uh, as you can imagine, the return on investment of that is incredible. But if they need another three years, uh, I usually recommend that you give them an extension and you increase the rent and you increase the purchase price. And now imagine what that ROI looks like at the end of the day. It's just, it's just amazing. So our goal is to create win-win situations where we're looking out for your interest, making sure you get an amazing return on your investment. We're also helping somebody who maybe was a previous homeowner. Quite often that's our tenants. A previous homeowner, we get them back into home ownership, so they're excited. And, you know, once again, that just creates an amazing opportunity for you because now you're, you're helping them, but getting paid a significant amount of money to do it. So once again, uh, you know, if you do have any problems, uh, you just give us a call and we handle everything for you. But usually you're not going to, you know, you're not even going to get a phone call from us. We're just going to handle all the, uh, anything that happens to come up. And those are usually minimal and they, they're very few and far between, luckily. So, you know, it's all about building uh, something that gives you that freedom. And that's really what we're after here. That's what these turnkey properties do is, you know, I could, I could show you how to get into real estate and, you know, buy yourself some properties. But if you don't know what you're doing, quite often you're buying yourself a bunch of headaches. This whole program is all about, you know, alleviating that so you can enjoy yourself. So um, one of the, the biggest uh, challenges with building this program is trying to build teams. And so one of the things, if you try to do this yourself, uh, you know, I can tell you that it takes months, if not years, to build the proper team. And I can tell you this from, from experience in building teams in many cities. So that's one of the challenges that, that you would face trying to do this on your own, is that you're going to have to make a lot of, you'd have to make a lot of trips to Atlanta, uh, trial and error. And one of the things I teach my students is that, you know, you could pick the best realtor. You could Google find the top realtor in the city. You could find the top uh, crew to fix up your homes. You could fix, find the top property managers. You got to remember all these people have egos and they all have their own style of doing things. And if these people don't mesh, you don't have a team. So there's a lot of work, a lot of trial and error and a lot of expense in building your teams. So this is something that I believe we've perfected. Uh, we have just an amazing uh, team, you know, everything from the property manager to our acquisition crew who, who build the relationships with the banks to the people doing the, the renovations. And because we do such large volume, we can attract great people who, who aren't going to mess with us because they know that they're not just going to lose one deal. They're going to lose hundreds of deals. And so these people go out of their way uh, to just treat us like gold because they know that, you know, we can make or break their, you know, their finances. I mean, if you look at how many deals they do with us in a year, uh, they're making a lot of money uh, with us. So they, they want to basically work hard for us. 
So the whole goal though, as I mentioned, is to save you time. Uh, you do not want to try building a team, especially if you're just trying to buy one or two properties. It doesn't make sense. It's very time consuming, it's costly, and it's not cost effective unless you're doing an amazing amount of volume. And that's where we come in. So you're just, you would burn, you know, thousands if not tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, quite often, like I said, people will take advantage of you if you're absentee. Property managers, I, I can tell you a story of one of my uh, clients who before they met me, they had a home in Phoenix. And they phoned me up one day and they go, Mike, you know, how is your, I know you own some properties in Phoenix. Are, are they, are you having a hard time keeping them rented? I go, no, not at all. Why do you ask? And they basically said that, you know, their property manager had allegedly been trying to rent it for months and just was vacant and uh, they just couldn't find a tenant for it. And so I said, uh, let me phone you back. And what I did is I phoned one of my friends in, in Phoenix and asked if they would mind driving by the property and knocking on the door. And sure enough, there was a tenant in the property paying cash and their property manager had been basically uh, pocketing the cash and saying it was vacant. So, you know, once again, if you're, if you're uh, absentee and your, your team knows that you're not gonna be there, there's a lot of opportunity to mislead you. And, and we see this not just with property managers, we see it with you know, your, your contractors who say, oh, there's no appliances there. And they go and buy you new appliances and they basically take your old appliances and sell them to somebody else. You know, there's a whole lot of ways that people can try and rip you off. And, and after uh, over 20 years of being in this industry, I pretty much know all the tricks. And so I basically take surprise trips to uh, every city that I work in. My team never knows when I'm going to be there. And I've also got other people on the ground that can check. You know, I've got uh, my teams will check on my other teams and it keeps everybody honest and it makes sure that we're not throwing money out the window. And quite often that's what happens to, to uh, especially rookie investors when they're first starting out is they make these mistakes that cost them tens of thousands of dollars. And my, jo my job is to take all these mistakes out of the equation for you. So uh, basically, as I mentioned, you know, basically there's opportunities all over the place. It's a matter of finding the best ones. And that's what I've done. I've done all my homework. I've invested in a whole bunch of other cities. In the past, I've invested in places like Las Vegas, uh, Phoenix. Uh, we've had uh, teams in Florida, New Orleans. I mean, all over the, uh, all over the United States. And a lot of those opportunities have come and now they've gone. So I could easily sell your properties in places and all those places I just mentioned because I have the teams there and we have access to properties, but the numbers don't make as much sense. So I'm always looking for where can I maximize the return on investment for my, for my investors. And so we search all over the place trying to find the best deals. And right now Atlanta is that place. So I've got a bunch of uh, testimonials here from some other people who have dealt with me and my teams. And one comes from Chong Ho in Singapore who actually flew to Atlanta to look at the, uh, the properties. And so he wrote, I visited the properties after viewing them online. While I believe that the U.S. is a safe place to invest, I was more concerned with property management and the quality of houses and neighborhoods. I came back and bought more properties. Then I have a, a client named Jerome who lives in Saskatoon in, in Saskatchewan, Canada. And uh, he's done a, no, a, a bunch of business with me now. And uh, Mike, he says, Mike has great teams in the markets where he invests and recommends these markets to his clients. We bought a property in Atlanta because it had a good ROI. The properties that he showed were, in, were all in good neighborhoods and updated with a fresh look. I'm looking forward to doing more dealings with Mike and his teams in the U.S. Um, I also have somebody from uh, San Francisco, uh, Mr. Wong, uh, who wrote, after an extensive due diligence, I bought two houses and plan on buying more. This was not the only turnkey operation that I investigated, but it's the only one that I bought from. And uh, Vince, who actually lives in Atlanta, wrote, initially I bought four properties using my retirement account. I was impressed with the property management team and delighted with my return on investment. My wife recently acquired three properties and we feel much safer with our money out of the diluted stock markets. Now the interesting thing about Vince is that he actually lives in Atlanta and instead of trying to build teams himself and try to buy properties and fix them himself, he just realized how much quicker and uh, more efficient and how much uh, better the return on investment is to have it all done for him as opposed to trying to, uh, you know, try to do this by himself. So that was very... Uh, very good testimonial. Also, uh, Wayne, who's a realtor uh, in a city just outside of Toronto, Ontario, Canada, wrote, as a Canadian realtor who is looking for U.S. properties personally as well as for clients, it was important that I found the right market and team to deal with. After much research and due diligence, I bought four homes personally and have helped clients buy homes for Mike's team. I have great confidence, confidence in referring clients to them 
and would be glad to provide references for anyone else who was thinking of investing with them. Now, uh, the interesting thing for Wayne is he wasn't just buying for himself. He had to do extra due diligence because he was buying, or not buying for his clients, he was uh, referring clients to us. And so he had to do a lot of homework on, on both us and the project. And so, uh, once again, another great testimonial. So uh, the main thing is we're here to guide you through every step. So if you live in the uh, U.S., great. If you live in a place like Canada, such as I do, or somewhere else in the world, I can help you with things such as a taxation, minimizing the taxes, protecting yourself from liability issues. Uh, I know all the different things that you go through as a foreigner trying to invest in the U.S. I can help you with that. If you're American, I can help you, uh, you know, invest with your IRAs and help you with your retire, you know, put your retirement money to much better use. So my goal is to make you more money so that you can buy more properties and hopefully we can do deals together over and over and over again. This isn't meant to be just a one-time thing. I'm here to build long-term relationships with you. So once again, whether it's to spend more time with your family, to travel more, uh, for your kids' education, or to give to give back more, I'm here to help you. So I'd like to invite you to a private strategy session. If this is something that resonates with you, I'd love to have a one-on-one uh, -on -one conversation so I can show you how we can help you build a better, uh, better future, a better uh, retirement, and just have more freedom and, and uh, better lifestyle. And that's what I'm here for. So I'd like to invite you for that. If this is something that resonates with you, please let me know and I'd be happy uh, to have a one-on-one -on -one strategy session with you. 